I'm very pleased to be here and uh, to share with you some uh, of our recent research in this area of um, uh, biotechnology and uh, forest products uh, technology. Uh, and I guess you're wondering what asymmetry has to do with pagodas and nanopapers. So I will try to make the connection for you. Um, First, I would like to let you know why I'm here in Finland and why I love uh, uh, Finnish nature and society. Uh, it is really obvious that uh, Finnish people uh, love nature and love the trees. And the uh, forest industry in Finland is a really, really a strong one. Uh, think only about the number of uh, private, private ownerships uh, in, of land uh, with trees, and this is really one of the highest in the world. So there is a very strong connection with nature. In nature as well, if we think about trees, uh, there are also some common elements that maybe are a little bit subtle, maybe not too obvious. Uh, one thing that you can notice in a tree is that they are tall. And, and so this is a, a, a form of uh, shape and isotropy in a way. Um, trees are tall and thin, and that's very important as far as how they structure in different uh, hierarchical structures. So uh, to put an example, if we think about uh, uh, wood logs or timber and uh, how they assemble and structure on a river as they are transported, you can already uh, learn that uh, those pieces of logs that, are, that have very high shape ratio uh, tend to form shapes and, and, and organize in such a way that the packing density is relatively high. We take the same logs and with those logs we make buildings and some of the longest standing buildings are made out of wood. Uh, this is the case of Pagoda in, in the bottom. So here we're looking, looking at structuring uh, bio-based materials at the meter scale. Now if we go to a further deconstruction level and we think about paper, that is, paper is produced from fibers and those fibers are at the same time uh, you know, the building block of a tree. So with fibers, we make a paper that you see in the bottom, and typically um, the paper size is in the order of centimeters or millimeters. And those fibers are uh, in the micron uh, level of thickness. But again, you see an structuring of fibers making a very nice material that has been uh, around us for uh, thousands of years. And it still is an important part of the economy. Then there is a new uh, start in this, uh, in this business, and that would be the case of a nanocellulose, a further deconstruction of fibers to lower sizes. And this is uh, an element that we can think of as a building block of fibers, and we call this uh, nanocellulose. Those are nanocelluloses, as you can see in that image, also structured as those logs are able to structure, but in, a, in the nanoscale. And of course, here the question is, what can we do with those uh, nanocelluloses to make uh, new materials? That's the big question here. If we go further, as far as the level of deconstruction, then we're going to stop here in the case of uh, the cellulose polymer. And if we take cellulose polymer and we dissolve it, then we can create films and we can create uh, uh, sort of plastics and materials with very interesting properties. Here we reach the highest deconstruction level. All along here, we're using the same building block from the beginning. This is cellulose from trees. And in all cases, then, we have an assembly of the material by taking control of different forces, going from the body forces, gravitational forces, colloidal forces, down to molecular interactions. So uh, it, to me, this is a very fascinating connection, going from the micro scale to the nano and molecular scale. If we take the case of the fibers, we can think about each fiber making up a piece of paper as being unequal to each other. All fibers there are different, so there is already a symmetry as is our face is asymmetric. And that's a very important uh, quality. So that handness that uh, we have in nature is really critical for our lives. As a, as a matter of fact, our life de depends on the asymmetries in the molecules. The same happens uh, in the case of fibers. Those fibers are seen here in, a, in a, a larger view. And then if we think about how they are built, then we can go to uh, lower levels, uh, hierarchy levels, and realize that in the cell wall of those fibers, there are smaller fibrils making up the walls. And those fibrils can be separated as what we call cellulose anofibrils. And those cellulose anofibrils, at the same time, 
are containing smaller built-in blocks that are known as cellulose nanocrystals. And this is a topic that here in Finland, in the Nordic countries, in North America, have attracted a lot of attention. Research in this area of cellulose going from the macro scale to the nano scale that you see in the bottom. So now we'll tell uh, maybe four different types of asymmetries that we have exploited to produce uh, new materials. The first has to do with the aspect ratio that I have already mentioned. That is, the particles are not spherical, they are asymmetric, they are long and thin. And this is extremely important because you can think about those uh, units being able to assemble in an ordered fashion and making structures like this one here that are aligned. And this is something that we have tried to do to align those beating blocks that come from the tree, nanocrystals. And we do that just by putting a nanocrystal suspension on a surface and shearing that suspension. As a result, and because of the high aspect ratio of those particles, they will align, as you see in the bottom. And if you apply an electric field, because they do uh, um, align further on their magnetic or electric field, then you have a very good uh, alignment and packing of those particles. Now, if we think about a film that we produce with those, with those nanoparticles, we're going to encounter a new property that it maybe is not too obvious for us. But if you think about a tree or wood, wood is a material that is piezoelectric. Piezoelectric means that if you deform the material, you can produce a potential. Or otherwise, under a potential, you can produce a, a deformation. What happened here is that in the case of the building block of uh, uh, wood, if we have a perfect alignment, then that piezoelectric effect will be expanded furthermore. So this is what we have obtained here. We are producing films of these nanocrystals, and these nanocrystals have this very high piezoelectric constant, meaning that if you apply a voltage, there will be a deformation. Or if you deform it, there will be um, a generation of a potential. This is very important in sensors, in actuators, and in energy harvesting. Now, the second property has to do with chirality. Uh, chirality means that uh, those uh, nanocrystals in suspension can form given organization. If you take a nanocrystal suspension, what you see here, they form these iridescence patterns. And if you, let it, if you let it stand, eventually it will form two phases, an isotropic phase and an isotropic phase. If we think about the anisotropic phase, what is happening there is that these nanocrystals organized in different layers, and there is a full rotation in a given distance that is called pitch P. And this is the effect very much that you see in some marine shells and, and many uh, natural uh, elements. And that is defined as a chiral pneumatic phase in this area of the so-called liquid crystals. So the cellulose from trees have this very interesting property, liquid crystals. And these are also found in some uh, 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 animals and insects, like the case of beetles, that under a given uh, cross polarizer you can see the reflection of light. But if you take the opposite polarization, then that light is cancelled. That that's give, gives rise to the so-called structural color. Color that comes not because there is a dye, but because of the kind of thing, nanoparticles that form the skin or the surface of those uh, insects and give rise to these reflection patterns. So in cellulose or crystal, in that cellulose from trees, we have the same situation here. This uh, chirality, this liquid crystal, and this handedness. Now, what is intriguing is that in these fibers, this handedness is always in the left hand. It's so-called so left-handed twists. It never happens in the right hand direction. That's a very interesting property that is still not well explained, or we don't know yet why this happens this way. Now, why this handedness happens it is very difficult to explain, but one of the hypotheses is that those nanocrystals that I show are twisted, as you can see here, and that twist will depend on a given uh, nanoparticle on the environment uh, in which that particle is uh, sitting. And therefore, you can see here that the organization will depend, and the pitch will depend on that twist and how often those twists happen in the nanoparticle. So I ran an experiment yesterday. I have the sample here. Maybe you can show. This is a, an old one, but I have it here in the back. And this is from the um, Helsinki Times. And what I did was to take a, a strip of the paper and I 
wet it, and then I let it dry overnight. This morning I woke up to make sure that the rotation was left-handed. And this is what you see here, Let's left-handed rotation. Maybe you cannot see from there. But all the strips of the paper are rotating in the same direction. This is not random. This is happening for some reason, as you can see maybe more clearly here. I didn't put enough weight, and therefore it shrunk a little bit. But my point is that uh, that phenomenon is very special and it's very unique. Again, it's only towards the left hand. And that we can call as a chirality effect that is coming from the building blocks of paper, that is the nanocrystals. If you think about those fibers, those fibers here are composed of those nanocrystals, and those that could, the nanocrystals are forming layers, and those layers are the ones I'm referring to as having this chirality. Okay, I will now explain the third asymmetry that I think is important, and this is another one, it's related to the surface energy. If we take one of those nanocrystals, you are going to realize that those nanocrystals are not really cylindrical. They have this shape that I show here. It's uh, 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 very different than a, a cylinder. And here we have the cellulose chains. An important fact in these crystals is that if you observe the, the crystallinity structure, the surfaces or the faces of these crystals have different properties because the arrangement of the cellulose molecule. So these crystals in one side can be hydrophobic, in the other side can be hydrophilic. That's very important. Meaning, to have this type of side asymmetry or surface energy asymmetry is very important because that means that they can accumulate in different surface energies. And this is something that we have exploited, for example, to produce emulsions. Emulsions are mixtures of oil and water that you can stabilize with a surfactant or a microparticle, and therefore you have a stable system. That is, in this case, oil and water emulsions. Now, we think about the nanocrystals, and as we already learned, they can structure very well because they have very high aspect ratio. That means that they can cover the uh, surface of the droplet in a very effective way. And as a matter of fact, that's what's happening here. Those oil and water uh, uh, droplets uh, are formed by a skin that are those nanocrystals that are assembling on the interface, at the interface. And in this case, it's the hydrophobic phases that are stabilizing the oil-water interface. A very interesting property, again, because the asymmetric properties of the nanocrystals. Now, we have used this further to make uh, capsules, hollow particles with magnetic, with magnetic properties that maybe I don't need to explain in detail. But all I want to say is that being able to assemble cellulose nanocrystals at interfaces can produce new materials with very special properties. And this is, I think, very exciting. The last type, type of uh, asymmetry that I want to show is chemical anisotropy. And this is the following situation. If we take one of those nanocrystals that are, that are twisted, we find that they are different in both ends. In one end, uh, they have a non-reducing end group, and in the other one, there is an absence of that reducing group. Meaning that the chemically, chemically, those uh, particles are different on both ends. So that's very unique. And this is something that uh, we have exploited to, for example, grow particles only in one end, and that allow us to produce particles that are asymmetric and that we can assemble in any given interesting ways. So this is an example that I wanted to show, uh, silver nanoparticles uh, that are able to be uh, built or bound to only one end of these nanocrystals. And this is very important in many photonic applications and optical, optical applications. Having the ability to put the nanocrystal in such a symmetry and maybe put it Put, to put them on a surface and producing given optical effects. This, for instance, has been exploited in other areas, like uh, making magnetic responsive nanocrystals for magnetic separation and many other um, uh, operations that are relevant to industry. Okay, so uh, I hope that I tried to convince you that there is really a connection be between pagodas and nanopaper. Uh, in pagodas, we're looking into meter scales from logs uh, that we assemble in given structures. But if we take this and deconstruct those materials to the nanoscale, we obtain uh, nanomaterials that can be used to produce films, nanopapers, and others. The case here is that of the nanopaper or a film of nanocellulose that is highly transparent and extremely strong. Extremely strong. So this is a material that really uh, offers a lot of possibilities in research and also in many applied fields. 
So I would like just to end to recap. Here we have checked the anisotropy as far as the aspect ratios of the materials. They are long and thin. The chirality or handedness. The surface energy asymmetry. They are different on one place and the other, as well as the chemical anisotropy. These are things that are not uh, obvious to us when we see a tree, but now I hope that you, when you see a tree, you remember the anisotropy in these uh, natural materials. Now, this is very relevant, and it's very relevant to the bioeconomy in inland. And uh, uh, I want to say that uh, with all these materials, we can build many important things. Uh, here there are some examples, lightweight materials. Um, we can drive energy efficiency, uh, bio-waste material, greener products, carbon dioxide targets, renewable compostable materials, or produced by a sustainable bioresource. My last uh, slide here is just to acknowledge uh, the, the work of my students, um, recently in NC State, North Carolina State University, but now in Alto. And uh, some of the work that I presented uh, was actually developed at ARCOP that is sitting here. You can ask him any questions about uh, chemical anisotropy. Also, Ingrid Yeager, uh, she's in North Carolina. She has been working with piezoelectric materials based on nanocellulose. And uh, the many other students, uh, doctoral students, and, and visitor professors that uh, we have enjoyed as a, uh, in the group, in our research group nowadays between the US and, and Finland. And of course, uh, thank you very much for your attention.